Well, the, I guess the most common misconception is that um, people think that the signature just covers one specific uh, piece of code, one specific malware. So it's just like a CRC blacklist or an MD5 blacklist. And it's, uh, the signatures certainly from today are much, much more advanced uh, than that. We use emulators to emulate behaviors from either uh, uh, PE files or executable files or even script files yeah. to see what their intent is and have some uh, heuristics detection based on that or even a signature detection based on that. And, um, well, the other misconception I think is that uh, a lot of people are saying that signatures are dead. And I do agree that signatures by themselves are dead. I mean, just the pure signature approach that is really that will not fight the uh, battle for you in sure. today's uh, world. But it still and it will be an essential element in one of the tools that you use to to, to detect malware. Because, for instance, file infectors, so viruses that actually infect files or modify them, you need signatures to detect these um, exactly or pretty exactly to, uh, to be able to reverse the changes that were made by the virus. Makes sense, because when you talk about, you know, the signature being dead, uh, when I talk to the whitelist vendors, they say, oh yeah, absolutely, you know, those guys are dinosaurs, but uh, they, they make good business stuff. Um, the flip side of it, do you think just access control, whitelisting, or uh, Vista UAC, or, or SE Linux on Linux, do you think that can be a solution instead of signature, or do you think the two need to coexist? I think the two need to coexist. We have seen that uh, when a number of years ago we started to in introduce like other technologies next to um, signatures, sure. they already t they really started, the bad guys started to focus on what can we do to bypass these controls. So uh, suddenly they try to, well, for instance, with rootkits or some other technologies, and it goes much, to, goes to a much more advanced level. So with whitelisting, you always need to have some control about what can execute, what cannot. Sure. So they will attack the wi the whitelisting platform, as, as it were. So they will simply try to circumvent either, and they will try to find some nice way to execute, um, therefore bypassing the whitelisting uh, yeah. stuff. On the other hand, we'll go to data formats. We will see macro viruses again, macro malware. Yeah, you, you can whitelist applications, but you cannot whitelist script files. I mean, you cannot whitelist the internet. So, and actually, when you look at it, uh, when you're browsing and your, your browser is parsing scripts, this is first happening in memory, and only then written to disk. So whitelisting is not a, an easy solution uh, to put in for 100% protection because there are a bunch of loopholes that potentially can be exploited. And I do know that uh, the whitelisting uh, uh, developers are trying to make sure that they close all these loopholes. But as we see on a daily basis, sure. um, uh, they, they can be exploited. Look what Microsoft is doing. They have fully realized that it is impossible to find every vulnerability, but they just try to build some ways around it that there, even if there is a vulnerability, it will not get exploited successfully.